right, welcome into Surviving Paradise, this little podcast that takes a sometimes serious, almost always humorous look at the claim by Jehovah's Witnesses and their governing body that the rest of us are living in a modern day spiritual paradise, thanks to them. I'm your host, Stacy Bauman, former elder, ministerial servant, and just a kid raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in the 70s and 80s. As I always do, just a warning, if you've just stumbled in here and you're new, thank you, welcome, please stay. But we try to have some fun here, we try to heal, we try to create some sense of community, a virtual hug, if you will. There's lots of sarcasm, lots of humor, lots of emotion. Sometimes we have tears, as we did last week. Never meant to offend. It is just this one person's look at their time and experience among Jehovah's Witnesses and unpacking what's going on today with that same group. So just be warned, after last week's highly emotional subject matter, I want to shift gears this week to a subject that I'm not completely sure how to define. I'm not even sure how to explain. And I think it gives you a peek into my mind in reference to what it takes once you leave Jehovah's Witnesses and how it lingers, how there's this residue, these scars, if you will, even as you exit stage left. This subject has always intrigued me. Even during my time as an elder, when I was very, very active in the organization. And the reason is, is because this particular subject we're going to unpack seems really blatant. It's very obvious to observe with the naked eye. But truthfully, at that time when I was among Jehovah's Witnesses, it, it, I didn't have a real grasp or understanding or familiarity with the term cognitive dissonance. And I think that this particular subject falls in that bucket and would love to get everyone's opinion on the matter. During my time as a witness and really particularly honing in on my time as an elder, I would spend a lot of time inside my head trying to explain what I was seeing. I remember arguing this very subject on several occasions with fellow elders in things such as judicial decisions, in things or subjects such as talks, public talks, convention talks, on things like meeting parts, and frankly, just in the everyday life of a Jehovah's Witness. And it's only now in hindsight that I kind of understand it, but again, I want to be forthright that I may ramble here because some of it is still so strange and so hard to wrap my mind around that all I can do is share my own observations. And when I say I kind of understand it, I do mean kind of. Even now, it's strange to watch. And it gives endless material for this little show, I might add, <laughs> and probably many more like it. But in all honesty, this particular thought or subject has always been difficult for me to explain or again wrap my head around. It's a weird one. And that's just a long-winded way of saying, bear with me here. I'm going to do my best to tackle, try to explain, and frankly, by all the social media and digital ways we can communicate, get other everybody else's opinion on it as well. So here it is. From the chambers of this guy's mind, from child, especially through his time as an elder, Jehovah's Witnesses claim to follow the Bible religiously. They claim that the Bible is the foundation for their faith, that the Bible is the foundation for their organization. They claim and print billions and billions of pages of publications claiming they alone understand this book, the Bible, and they alone apply its words, principles, doctrines, guidelines to every single detail of their lives. There isn't enough time to cover all the claims or catchphrases that I've been exposed to that come from the governing body that they've attached to the Bible or 
the claimed importance of the Bible in a Jehovah's Witness's life. In my time as a J-Dub, I, I want to give some examples here uh, as I'm caffeinating with a fine cup of single-origin Brazilian coffee. <laughs> I, some examples that pop off the top of my head. I heard the Bible referred to in many different ways. And again, all in an attempt to emphasize that it is the singular greatest gift man has that he can physically hold in his hand from Jehovah God. They've called it during my time, frozen Holy Spirit. Did anyone hear that one in a talk, a public talk or a watchtower? I've heard it referred to as a letter from Jehovah to you personally. I've heard it referred to as the mouthpiece of God. I've heard it referred to as the breath of God himself. And those are what pop off the top of my head. There are many more, but I think you get the idea. And I'm sure some of you can relate. And finally, one more example. They quote this verse a lot when it comes to the Bible, right from the pages of God's word at Hebrews chapter four and verse 12, we get this. And again, all references from the New World Translation, the highly doctored version from the 10 guys in upstate New York. Hebrews 4.12 says this, quote, for the word of God is alive and exerts power and is sharper than any two-edged sword and pierces even to the dividing of soul and spirit and of joints from the marrow and is able to discern thoughts and intentions of the heart, end quote. That's one powerful book. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree? And if you'll note, Yet another comparison, the Bible is a sword. <laughs> it pierces everything, your thoughts, your intentions. How? Not entirely sure, as mentioned at the outset, still a weird subject for me. But it goes on. Moses, you know, the guy that led all those Israelites in the wilderness for X amount of years. Moses told God, God's people, the Israelites, again, recorded in this book, the Bible, at Deuteronomy 32, 47, he went on to say, this is no empty word for you, but it means your life, end quote. <laughs> so, with so much emphasis put on how a Jehovah's Witness depends on the Bible, the sheer gravity and weight of its importance in their life, for every decision they may make or face, one would reasonably ask, what is their track record of indeed obeying the Bible, the breath of God, his personal letter to them, the sword that pierces every thought and intention of their brain and their heart? What can we expect to see from a Jehovah's Witness if you were to shadow them throughout any given day or night in their life? Should be a pretty easy answer, right? What follows here could potentially be uncomfortable for a Jehovah's Witness that is secretly having doubts and has somehow stumbled into this little show with the rest of us. Again, thank you for being here. Please stay. Please stay. We're friendly. When you ask a Jehovah's Witness if they follow the Bible, the answer is always a resounding, yes, of course. It's everything to me. I use it for every thing I do in life. Everything, every decision, decisions that are life and death in some cases. However, a quick look at their lives, conduct, and decisions completely belies that claim. Completely. It's not debatable. And that's where the weird, murky emotions come in for me. In fact, the worst part of this is that the vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses who claim the Bible is life and death to them have never even read the Bible. <laughs> One of the most gigantic ironies I've ever faced in my life as an elder, most of them have never even read the letter from Jehovah, including elders who are helping people make life and death decisions. And I can tell you this unequivocally, they certainly have never studied the Bible thoroughly. 
They haven't taken the time. They don't buy out time daily to, you know, turn off their Netflix account and dig into the Bible, into the Greek, into the history and archaeology. No. There's a very, very small, and I mean minutia group of witnesses that do that. Most do not. So when 8 million people claim that the Holy Bible is their everything, but don't follow it at all, one would reasonably ask who or what do they follow? Ah, uh, well, we'll get into that, <laughs> as you might imagine. Can you imagine how much simpler the life of a Jehovah's Witness would be if they truly just followed the Bible? If they really did just dig into its pages and try to apply the principles, the morals, the stories, the parables, everything, you name it, pile them on. If they really tried to just do that, and, and let's make it even simpler. By the Bible, let's just, let's just say we mean mostly the New Testament. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jehovah's Witnesses aren't going to dig into the Old Testament and get into slavery, kill people for working on Sundays, so on and so forth, right? But imagine if they just followed the New Testament, in particularly, particular, I should say, narrowing down the life of Jesus, the Gospels. But they don't. They do not. But first, a quick word on the Bible and what this host believes about the Bible, because frankly, I get a lot of DMs and messages asking if I personally believe in the Bible as an inspired book. So let's get this out of the way and move on. The Bible to me is a classic book. I've read it seven times. I've studied it thoroughly. I've looked into every deep corner and crevasse I personally could before I gave up doing that. It has fascinating stories. Dare I say entertaining stories. It has intrigue. It has science fiction. It has fantasy. It even has some good principles, some anecdotes, some morals, things that are very good in the pages of the Bible. However, I do not believe it was written by an invisible God that also happened to create the planet and the universe. I don't believe that it was written under inspiration from a supreme being. I'll get in more into the Bible itself in a future show because it does bleed into a lot of what we talk about on this podcast. But that at least answers the question as we dive into this subject. Bible is an interesting book. Everyone should read it. Do I believe that they should base their life on it? No. Moving along. Why do I say that Jehovah's Witnesses don't follow the Bible? Let's look at some simple examples to prove the point. And again, this may be uncomfortable for a witness that has stumbled in here. It's kind of uncomfortable as you're leaving, realizing that you too have not really been following the Bible for the most part when you're trying to heal from your exit. And some people have been out so long and recognize the Bible for what it is or share similar beliefs to me and realize, okay, let's tackle this thing. I'm going to try to keep it very, very simple here, and I'll start here in my personal belief that Jehovah's Witnesses do not follow the book they claim guides their life. At 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, again, right from the pages of the New World Translation of Jehovah's Witnesses, it says this, and please listen carefully, especially if you're someone on the fence about Jehovah's Witnesses. The Bible from the Supreme Being says this, quote, All Scripture is inspired of God and beneficial for teaching, for reproving, for setting things straight, for disciplining in righteousness, so that the man of God may be fully competent, completely equipped for every good work. End quote. Big claims there from Jehovah in his letter to the rest of us. And so it's from this simple beginning that everything about Jehovah's Witnesses starts to fall apart. <laughs> Truthfully, there are many of those starting points, depending on the person. But this one, this subject bothered me from a young age. And how do I describe this? 
It's what I mean when I say it's confusing to me even now and bizarre. And I feel so disconnected from thought when I talk about it. it I'm not even sure I'm explaining that correctly. This book I started reading at the young age of five, that's me being very honest, I did, tells me it's all I need in my life. Did you catch the key phrases from Jehovah himself? That this book is perfect. It makes you fully competent, completely equipped for every good work. Now let's talk about fully competent and completely equipped. It's a letter from the creator of the universe and beyond. And by comparison, do you walk into a surgery and go under anesthesia with a surgeon who is not fully competent and completely equipped, especially one who's never been to med school, has never gotten a, a degree? Do you do that? Of course not. You want one that's fully competent. Do you get on an airplane that isn't fully competent, fully equipped, completely equipped, not only mechanically, but by the pilots flying it? No, of course not. If there's any doubt as to something being fully competent or completely equipped, we reject it. This book claims that it's all you need for a way to live life to know the invisible creator of the universe and beyond, for making every decision you will personally face, for your relationships, any jobs, a marriage, parenting. I was given a simple message that I grew up hearing over and over and over again. The Bible is all you need. And yet, <laughs> here we are. There is simply no easy way to say this. Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that. <laughs> they don't believe the Bible, and they certainly don't obey it. And that's where the cognitive dissonance, the bizarreness on this subject comes into play. All you hear about is the Bible. All you hear about is study the Bible daily. All you hear it, but they don't believe it. They don't obey it. They don't believe God's word at 2 Timothy 3 that says, it's all you need to be fully competent and completely equipped. A Jehovah's Witness listening or that you may encounter will argue this point. Check out a Jehovah's Witness on Twitter any given day of the week or in a forum or in blog posts or on Reddit. They will argue that their entire lives are based on the Bible the breath of God, Jehovah's magic letter to them personally. But it's downright brain-bending when you realize that the conflict they have with the Bible is literally in the verse itself. <laughs> it's right there. This verse, 2 Timothy 3.16, in my effort to keep it simple, tells us and leads us to believe that it came from Jehovah, so the foundation is solid. But Jehovah says that the book makes the man of God fully competent, completely equipped for every good work. The airplane is perfect. The surgeon is fully equipped. Is there any ambiguity in those phrases? It completely equipped? Is there a little wiggle room that says, well, kind of equipped? Or, eh, sort of equipped? Or maybe completely equipped except for a couple of things? <laughs> It just means sort of or kind of, right? Because if it doesn't, someone has a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> Why do I say that? Because for a book, Jehovah's Witnesses claim is sheer perfection from the creator himself that completely equips them. They really don't appear to believe that. <laughs> Not at all. Again, why do I say that? Let's keep it simple here. How does a Jehovah's Witness explain the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society in light of this verse in the book from Jehovah? How does it explain the Watchtower and its billions and billions of pages 
of other literature, some of which claim that they, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, the books, the tracts, now it's moved into internet sites, websites, and videos, and more, are all needed and required reading to save lives when they already have the only book that says they will ever need. <laughs> Again, keeping it simple, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 seems pretty straightforward, not a lot of ambiguity in there, completely equipped, fully competent, the Bible. How does a Jehovah's Witness justify the Watchtower magazine alone? We could go on an absolute rant on the history of Jehovah's Witnesses, the rainbow books under Judge Joe Rutherford, the books that have came and went, Old Night, New Light, see a last episode, <laughs> or previous episode rather. The watch, but the, let's just focus on the Watchtower magazine, their chief uh, communication to the world. Again, not the Bible. The Watchtower magazine alone, all of this available on their website. <laughs> Wait, they need a website? <laughs> Why do they need a website when they have the Bible? Okay, I digress. We'll get there. The Watchtower alone boasts a print run for each issue of more than 42 million copies. The Awake magazine, its companion, is second with a circulation of 41 million copies. Apparently there's a million people who aren't interested in the awake with such illustrious articles as, hi, I'm your spleen, um, how to stack BBs underwater, some of the stupidest stuff you'll ever read in your life. Uh, never mind that most of these end up, that being the watchtower and awake, as liners in bird cages or stacking up in laundromats somewhere these numbers dwarf, just the Watchtower and Awake numbers dwarf publications such as National Geographic, The Reader's Digest, and People Magazine. <laughs> Apparently the annual Sexiest Man Alive issue can't compete with another article about how we're all doomed to die by fireballs, whether we're sexy or not. <laughs> People, you're getting dwarfed by the Watchtower and Awake magazine. Listen to those numbers, and none of them are the Bible. None of this takes into account the books, the tracts, the kingdom ministries. It's just the two magazines, each issue, each one, of which there are a couple each month, 41 and 42 million. On their little website, again, another medium outside God's Word, the Bible, you can find more nuggets of truth like this quote, we printed almost 12 million copies of examining the scriptures in 2013 alone. But for the 2020 edition, thanks to the website, we printed only about 5 million booklets. My point is, look at these numbers. Millions? What if it was just one page? It's still not the Bible. So I need to ask if the Bible is truly all a Jehovah's Witness needs, leaving them fully competent and completely equipped, those are Jehovah's words, not mine, why the hell do any of us need these other publications? <laughs> why? If I'm following the perfect word of God, why do I as a Jehovah's Witness need a young people ask book to get me through puberty. Why, why do I need a full color illustration of people being pelted by fireballs at Armageddon found in their literature? Or how about the irony, and this is for the old timers who remember this, how about the irony of the book and its title, Aid to Bible Understanding, the big blue paperweight that was massive in the 60s and 70s prior to the Insight books. The title, Aid to Bible Understanding? I thought I just read in the Bible at 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, that it makes me fully competent and completely equipped. <laughs> 
Why do I need an aid to understand it? Is now, <laughs> is now a good time to bring up what the Bible says happens to those that are ruining the earth at Revelation eleven eighteen? Because when you consider the billions of publications outside the Bible that are apparently helping us to understand the Bible, I, I have to wonder, here, here's my ADHD kicking in, I, I have to wonder how many trees have paid the price to bring you the latest edition of the Watchtower or Awake magazine, or the soil that's been destroyed to hide and bury gallons and gallons of used and unused ink. Something the good old, I, good old guys, I might add, in upstate New York have been caught doing, ruining daddy's planet. Check that one out. Ink buried in upstate New York. Find for that one. Couldn't come into play at a Revelation 11, 18, right? About those ruining the earth. But don't worry. I've got more. <laughs> I, have, I have news. I have to share this because it's just pure gold on so many levels. And it goes again to the question, do Jehovah's Witnesses follow the Bible or do they follow men? I'm keeping it simple. From their website, you get the following nugget of Holy Spirit and life-saving truth and information. It says there, a new, under their donations page, I might add, isn't that interesting? A new book with a new feel. That's the headline. And again, this is on the website, discussing the book, Enjoy Life Forever, January 2021. We get this nugget of truth that every Jehovah's Witness apparently needs to know. It says under the subheading, heavier paper. <laughs> Why was this necessary? Enjoy Life Forever has over 600 colorful images nearly 10 times more than the Teach Us book. The new book also has more white space, areas without text or artwork on its pages. These two factors present a problem. When the paper is thin, images on the reverse side of a page may be seen, even if only vaguely. <laughs> to avoid this, I mean, what a massive problem. To avoid this, brothers in the International Printing Department in Wallkill, New York, USA, tested four types of paper that we are currently using in our printeries. The writing committee of the governing body examined each sample and selected the least transparent paper. Although this paper cost about 16% more, ding, 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 than the paper we use for most of our other publications, it allows Bible students to read each page of Enjoy Life Forever without being distracted by images on the reverse side of the paper. End quote. <laughs> the Bible fully equips you and is a tool that makes you completely competent. However, however, under donations, we feel it's important for you to know that the book Enjoy Life Forever, Why Do We Need It? has 600 images. Why? <laughs> and the governing body took the time to examine paper to make sure you couldn't see the illustrations on the back page. I'm truly get, glad Jesus has the governing body examining paper stock instead of saving lives. Why are you producing books and worrying about paper and donations when the Bible is complete? And my favorite line from that little snippet, it allows Bible students to read Let's say that again. It allows Bible students to read each paid a page of Enjoy Life Forever. Uh, why are we reading this book instead of the Bible? I'm a Bible student. <laughs> this stuff is all, this is one goofy, ridiculous example of the depth of bizarreness around this that's going on under the nose of every Jehovah's Witness that's part of that organization. An organization that claims the end is, is here. It's coming any second. 
We're very concerned with paper stock producing books that aren't needed according to the Bible to study the very book that says they aren't needed. On and on the circle goes in your brain. And if you're wondering why this host is confused by such things, there you go. But sticking to the point, to summarize, the perfect instruction manual from Jehovah requires additional instruction manuals to explain his original instruction manual. <laughs> we weren't completely equipped after all, Jehovah. Keep in mind, the question here is, do Jehovah's Witnesses follow the Bible or men? Well, let's let the governing body answer that question themselves one more time. And this is just one of thousands of examples I can point to. But if you're not picking it up on a deeper level, can you see how cognitive dissonance begins? How people just get in line and start obeying and start following? There's some strange perception or some foundation built here that I need another book to explain the perfect book written by Jehovah. The new book's written by we don't even know who, the 10 guys in upstate New York. But again, let's let the governing body show what they do one more time. Again, one of thousands of examples. It's again on their website under the page, how your donations, there's a clue, are used. A library in the palm of your hand, September 1st, 2021. You get this quote. Not long ago, receiving our spiritual food digitally would have been hard to even imagine. Uh, can you relate to those words? They were part of an encouraging talk given by Jeffrey Jackson in the 2020 Governing Body Update number six. He continued, and yet now we probably wonder how we'd be coping with this pandemic without tools like the Jehovah's Witness Library. Jehovah has been preparing us over the years to be ready for something like this, end quote. First, how could a Jehovah's Witness get through the pandemic without the Jehovah's Witness library? I don't know, maybe the Bible? <laughs> the one Jehovah gave us? <laughs> Second, Jehovah's been preparing us for years to go digital? He has? I. Didn't get that in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. I thought he said to follow his word and it left me completely equipped for every good work. <laughs> Jehovah now is interested in digital. He didn't mention it in his first book known as the Bible. But now, thank goodness for Jeffrey Jackson, who's got some issues with honesty, see the Australian Royal Commission, is now telling us Jehovah's been prepping us to go digital and he was doing it just for the pandemic. How would we have survived without a library of books and magazines that aren't the Bible? I could give thousands of examples and references of this. A group of men claiming to be chosen by Jesus and holding a book from Jehovah himself, a personal letter written to every precious human on this earth which says to read the letter, the Bible, but not without these guys, their publications, their own interpretations. Remember the same book that says anyone can read it and be complete and so on. <laughs> not only is the Bible not enough, but they've made it easy for people to gain everlasting life in khakis and summer dresses by leveraging digital technology not just for the Bible, but for their literature, <laughs> the stuff they write, not Jehovah, although allegedly Jesus gets involved, which makes it all the more fascinating to see past episodes as the literature changes about life and death matters from one year or one decade to the next new light, old light. Jesus is hitting the light switch. He's flicking it up and down, just like you did as a kid. But it doesn't stop there. Each download from the JW Library, incur I'm sorry, I'm quoting from the website here. Each download from the JW Library incurs a small cost. 
This could be a clue, huh? Last year, for example, we spent over 1.5 million US dollars to provide streaming and downloads from JW.org and for the JW Library app. Still, it is far less expensive to download digital publications and recordings than to produce and ship literature, CDs, and DVDs. Question here, guys in New York, that was an end quote, why do we need the digital downloads, the app, the library, the publications, recordings, CDs, and DVDs? Why do we need them? <laughs> Aren't we supposed to just be reading the Bible and following the words of God in the Bible? The statistics regarding their publications and literature written to explain God better than he apparently explained himself could go on for hours. I could sit here for hours reading this stuff. But this is what I marveled at in my time as a Jehovah's Witness. God's book says this. These 10 guys in upstate New York say that. Make no mistake here. Jehovah's Witnesses favor the guys in upstate New York every single time. Because if they don't, they'll be disfellowshipped and lose everything in their life anyway. Despite having the Bible, the letter from Jehovah, the frozen Holy Spirit in their hands telling them, I'm all you need, read this book, they fall prey and obey 10 guys that are telling you to your face as you read 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, that the Bible isn't enough. And if you dare raise your hand and ask why, or I'm looking at 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it's saying it is enough, it's all I need. So I'm wondering why you're saying it isn't enough. Those 10 guys will have you on the fast track to the B-School in front of three elders in a judicial committee asking if you've gone apostate with the threat being that they're about to disfellowship you. And there, folks, is the answer to so many other questions. Most particularly, why is this such a bizarre subject? Most particularly, why do Jehovah's Witnesses obey men over the Bible? Once you're a baptized Jehovah's Witness, you can talk about the Bible all you want, and they do. We've seen it on their buildings when they were in Brooklyn, New York. You'll see it as titles of Watchtower articles. Go to the website. It's probably got something about reading the Bible daily right now. They pitch it. It's an interesting foundation stone to what they do. But make no mistake, they don't want Jehovah's Witnesses doing that. They want them reading the manuals they created to explain Jehovah's manual that he said you didn't need anything else but. <laughs> so in two simple verses from the Bible, you get the answer to the question, do Jehovah's Witnesses follow the Bible or do they follow men? Let's try to summarize it in our own way. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 was incomplete. It was incomplete. It wasn't truthful. It didn't tell the whole story. All along, Jehovah, in his forgetfulness, and as we like to remind people on the show, Jehovah and Jesus forget a lot of stuff. They've got really awkward way of coming up with decisions and then changing them. They're very forgetful. But Jehovah left out much of what he really meant to say at 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It should read like this. And this is how Jehovah's Witnesses make no mistake, whether they realize it or not, cognitively. This is what they really see when they read 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It says this, Jehovah, you're so forgetful. 
It says, quote, All scripture is inspired of God and beneficial for teaching, for reproving, for setting things straight, for disciplining in righteousness, so that the man of God may be fully competent, completely equipped for every good work. However, don't forget my Bible study aids, soon to be published in New York in the United States of America, which has not yet been discovered, by eight guys, then ten guys, in 2023. This here book in your hand is a good book, but it's not complete until those guys start pumping out their books. End quote. <laughs> yes, bad humor and sarcasm from this podcast host. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, as seen, whether they see it by eye or they're taught it and it seeps into their soul. This is what Jehovah's Witnesses see, hear, and read when they see 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. That crazy Jehovah. Well, he's forgetful. He does have a lot going on. <laughs> he's got a lot going on. But maybe you're wondering, can someone, to make this matter worse, to go deeper on this question, do they follow the Bible or men? Maybe you're wondering, can someone, including a Jehovah's Witness, read the, the Bible privately and have his own relationship with Jehovah and his son, Jesus Christ? The, the Bible says you can. <laughs> the Bible says you can. But you might be wondering, well, with all this clarity about it really not being complete, oops, can I just read a Bible and, and actually have a relationship with Jehovah and Jesus Christ? You know, any translation, anywhere? Well, folks, let's once again look at the governing body and let them answer that question for us. I give you the Watchtower of 1973, July 1st, page 402, where it says, quote, Consider, too, the fact that Jehovah's organization, not his book, his organization alone in all the earth is directed by God's Holy Spirit or active force. Only this organization, not his book, functions for Jehovah's purpose and to his praise. To it alone, God's sacred word, the Bible, is not a sealed book. Many persons of the world are very intelligent, capable of understanding complex matters. They can read the Holy Scriptures, but they cannot understand their deep meaning. Yet God's people, read Jehovah's Witnesses, can comprehend such spiritual things. Why? Not because of special intelligence on their part, but as the Apostle Paul declared, for it is to us God has revealed them through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches into all things, even the deep things of God." End quote. So there it is. Not only is the Bible not enough, as we have very simply established in a matter of minutes, but even if you have a Bible and you're ignoring what it says, you wouldn't understand it even if you wanted to anyway. <laughs> the Bible, as seen anywhere on this planet in its numerous translations, found in side desks or <laughs> in side tables in a Holiday Inn anywhere in the United States, that Bible is nothing more than a secret code that only the guys in upstate New York can understand or explain to the rest of us. Despite the fact that eh, Jehovah had it written, he said it's all you need, ignore that small fact from the Creator. As you can see, you can't even read a Bible or understand it without the 10 guys in upstate New York. Which raises other questions like, did we only understand it kind of a couple weeks ago when it was only eight guys in upstate New York? Did they need the other two guys to keep teaching us what the Bible should say? <laughs> Lots of questions. I give to you yet another reference from that illustrious Bible study aid, Worship the Only True God book, pages 26 through 27, paragraph 7. Boy, does it land this point home. It says, quote, Of course, 
of course. This does not mean that if we read it on our own, we need nothing else. <laughs> the scriptures warn against isolating ourselves. We should not think that we can figure out everything by independent research. Both personal study and regular meeting attendance at the meetings of God's people are needed if we are to be balanced Christians, end quote. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that little reference from Worship the Only True God, which was handed out to millions of people earthwide, might be one of the most dynamic and perfect examples of the term gaslighting. <laughs> Imagine telling someone who just wants to know God, who wants a better life, Something like, of course, this does not mean that if we read it on our own, we need nothing else. Really? <laughs> the scriptures weren't against isolating ourselves. I, I wasn't going to isolate myself. I was just going to read the Bible. <laughs> we shouldn't think we can figure things out with independent research. Really? How do you guys figure it out? <laughs> that one paragraph from Worship the Only True God book might be one of the best examples of gaslighting you'll ever see from the 10 guys in upstate New York. And there are millions of them in their books. But it's not very subtle, is it? If you pick up a Bible or you just roll over in your bed in your hotel room and pull one out of the side drawer, thanks guys from Gideon, you're not going to understand a word of it anyway. You won't be able to do that unless you ask the 10 guys in upstate New York and you go to a kingdom hall and not just once, but folks regularly. And you'll need to get baptized and be one of us. Otherwise, forget it. The best-selling book on this planet, you're not going to understand it anyway. <laughs> it's impossible. That whole message from Jehovah himself, you know, the one who wrote the Bible, captured in the Bible, ironically claiming it was the best book ever and all you ever needed in life. Well, folks, it's just not true. Not true, according to Jehovah's Witnesses. You need millions and millions and millions of pages of other publications from the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. You need, again, additional instruction books, aids to Bible understanding, to uh, explain the original instruction book. <laughs> it's just incredible. And thus why I say at the outset, this is such a murky, strange subject. This is going on right in front of your face, under your nose. Jehovah says that. Ten other guys say this. Who are we going to follow? Uh, I was about to break into a Ghostbuster song. Who are we going to call? The ten guys in upstate New York. I can't understand this book anyway unless I get, get you know, Get with those guys. It's incredible. And it's so murky and bizarre and what it does to your brain and your emotions. Even now, I've been out for 14 years. I know the reality of this. And I still feel like I can't wrap my head around the depth of what they do to wonderful people trapped in this cult. And it's always been a weird one because they push the Bible. And pushing the Bible has always been an odd flex to me. I give you the Watchtower of June 2011, where we get this nugget of truth from Jesus and the 10 guys under the subheading, When Was the Bible Written? It, it gives us this, quote, The Bible is an exceptional book. More than 3 billion people consider it sacred text. It has been called the best-selling book of all time, with an estimated 6 billion copies printed in whole or in part, in over 2,400 languages, end quote. They share that fact with Jehovah's Witnesses. You can find it on the website, Watchtower, June 2011. And with that simple factoid, I got a couple of questions. <laughs> First, uh, why? Why are you sharing this? What does it matter that three billion people consider it sacred or that it's the best-selling book of all time or that it's in 2400 language, languages 
or that it has six billion plus in print. Why? The governing body tells us in their own literature, the better literature, that no one can understand that book anyway. <laughs> So there are six billion plus letters from Jehovah floating around out there. And he wrote it and he wasn't very good at writing it because none of us can understand it anyway. But note, our life depends on it. <laughs> our life depends on it. You saw it right from the pages of his book. This is literally like getting a book from a bunch of aliens or Martians in a language no one knows, but bragging about how they have the book. What? <laughs> What does it matter? I have the book. I can't understand it. It doesn't matter how much it's been printed or how many languages. And my second question was just weird factoids regarding the Bible and how they've leveraged it for a publishing empire. A second question, why are you encouraging us to read something we can't understand? <laughs> they had it plastered on the side of the building in Brooklyn Bethel. Read God's word, holy Bible daily. Something to that effect. Read the Bible daily. Plastered. Why are you encouraging billions of people to read this book we can't understand? You said it. I didn't. Your words, not mine. Wait. Could it be because as you claim we need you, we're going to need you to give us an instruction manual to explain Jehovah's instruction manual? Got it. Okay, got it. <laughs> Before we go any further on whether Jehovah's Witnesses follow the Bible or men, it's important to note something that makes everything before it even more useless, absurd, and comical. Despite apparently Jehovah lying to us all at 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, saying it was complete, despite Jehovah preserving it through centuries of abuse and, and near destruction, despite being able to go to, to get one anywhere, I should say, despite being a Jehovah's Witness or not, did you know this additional point? The Bible wasn't written for us. It wasn't written for millions of Jehovah's Witnesses anyway. It wasn't written for the billions of other people that Jehovah hoped would read it. It never was written for us. Not only is it not fully equipping us, not only do we need literature from these guys to understand it, not, not only do they push it knowing we don't understand it, but then we learn the book was never written for you and me anyway. What? Behold, I give you the United in Worship book, page 111, where it says this, quote, Special attention was being given to make up the government that would rule mankind for 1,000 years, and nearly all the inspired letters in the Christian Greek scriptures are primarily directed to this group of kingdom heirs, the holy ones, partakers of the heavenly calling. End quote. Did you catch it? The Bible was written for an elite group of guys going to heaven. Women are supposed to go to in that 144,000, but they're rarely mentioned and they're certainly never pictured. <laughs> it's an odd, odd flex. <laughs> the Bible was written for them. The Watchtower of 1974, June 15th, page 376. Quote, also, it is to the spirit-anointed Christians who will rule in that kingdom that most of the Christian Greek scriptures is directed, including the promises of everlasting life." End quote. I, where do you begin? The Bible was written only for people going to heaven. Witnesses claim that's 144,000. The 10 guys in upstate New York are among that group. The Bible's really only for them anyway. It's an odd flex from Jehovah. It's a bestseller. It's available to all of mankind. None of us can understand it anyway. And it was only ever really written for 144,000 people. <laughs> so that's right, if you're keeping score. Not only were we all lied to, including Jehovah's Witnesses not going to heaven, 
Not only will we need the guys from the Watchtower Society to explain this book, but uh, it wasn't written for any of us anyway. <laughs> only those going to heaven to throw fireballs down to the earth. <laughs> Original question. Do Jehovah's Witnesses follow the Bible or men? The answer has become clear, right? How can you follow the Bible if you're a Jehovah's Witness who wants to live in paradise with a fruit basket and panda bear? You can't understand the book anyway. Was it written for you? <laughs> and I'll tell you what, those 10 guys in upstate New York and the rest of those going to heaven just got more important. They just got more important. Am I alone in the confusion and bizarre thinking surrounding whether a Jehovah's Witness follows the Bible or men? The world's bestseller, which claims to equip us completely for anything, is rarely read or thoroughly studied by a common Jehovah's Witness. It also requires additional books and magazines from an elite group of guys in upstate New York to make sense of it, and wasn't made for us anyway. I'm rambling, but there's the summary. Where do you go with this fact? These are facts from Jehovah's Witnesses. These are facts if you're a Jehovah's Witness. Where do you go with this? I've got an instruction manual for life. My life depends on following it, but I need several other books or magazines to even understand it. In fact, new books for this to understand are coming out constantly. <laughs> and none of it was written for this hopeful panda owner anyway. It's really something, isn't it? Oh, man. Well, it's simply this, as we move close to this, the close of this fun subject, surely a Jehovah's Witness can turn to the Bible when they need it most, right? I'm not sure how at this point with the facts that we've shared. But when a Jehovah's Witness needs to make a critical life or death decision, they turn to their Bibles, right? For every guideline in their life, reach for the New World Translation, right? Let me give you some examples that jump to mind of critical decisions a Jehovah's Witness may face. And according to the Bible itself, they should be able to find answers in its pages. Remember, the Bible says it's completely equipped for anything a Jehovah's Witness face. But first, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, as I get into some examples of things they can find in the Bible. That verse in God's original instruction manual says this, quote, Now, brothers, these things I have applied to myself and Apollos for your good, that through us you may learn the rule. Do not go beyond the things that are written. End quote. From the pages of God's self-proclaimed instruction manual for life that completely equips us, for every good work, that here tells us not to consider anything beyond what is written. He calls it a rule. I'm sure then, with that in mind, we can find answers from God himself to the following critical questions a Jehovah's Witness may face, right? Here's a sampling. Where does the Bible say I cannot receive a life-saving blood transfusion in an emergency situation? Where can I find the command to not celebrate birthdays or eat cupcakes? Which Bible book features the discouragement regarding college to not go, to not even pursue it? How do I find the instruction from Jesus about staying in a marriage if I'm being beat to death by my spouse? Can someone point me to where it explains if someone I love decides they don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness anymore, I must then shun them, consider them mentally diseased, and never speak to them again, no matter what? Which Bible book features the command to not play school sports? Can I get a reference where Jesus talks about some guys in the 20th century, one of which is a drunk racist named Judge Joe Rutherford, uh, that he chooses to be his mouthpiece to the rest of us? Or, or where he tells them to build a mansion in San Diego? Can I get a reference, maybe a location in the perfect book, where it says he has an organization 
It gets people killed and collects a database of child molesters that it keeps hidden from the rest of the world. Or how about the one where they should become a real estate empire? So I thought all this stuff was in the holy book given to us from Jehovah himself. Wait, it isn't? Wait. Oh, we forgot the book that makes us fully competent and completely equipped for every good work left out these things. And those Bible study aids printed in New York fixed all that. Well, because, you know, the original wasn't any good anyway. <laughs> it wasn't for us anyway. We didn't understand it. Psych. You got us this time, Jehovah. You got us. You got us. Printed this book. None of us can understand it. We need 10 guys in New York to give us books to understand it. I... You got us. Good one. <laughs> Do not go beyond what is written. It's a rule. Jehovah's Witnesses not only don't read their Bibles, they openly obey and follow men. If you're a witness listening and you're uncomfortable, you should be. It is uncomfortable. Don't be hard on yourself. Just spend time with it. Sit with it. You're not going to find verses on any of the subject I just reeled off the top of my head whatsoever. Or bizarrely enough, you'll even find verses that state the opposite of what you currently believe or obey as a Jehovah's Witness. You will. I just read one. Don't go beyond what is written. It's a rule. But one thing is for sure. That book openly tells us that we'll be completely equipped, fully competent. It also tells us don't go beyond the things written. You don't need additional Bible study aids. And yet an estimated 8 million Jehovah's Witnesses openly oh, disobey those commands daily. Daily. And they do it in favor of following 10 guys in upstate New York. And if you don't follow those 10 guys and agree with everything they say, they'll blow up your world. If you're a Jehovah's Witness listening, and hopefully there are some that have stumbled into the show, consider the words of your King, Jesus Christ, found in the Bible at Matthew chapter 15 and verse 9. And see if it triggers any emotions in you. Jesus, in the book Jehovah Calls Perfect, said this, quote, It is in vain that they keep worshiping me, for they teach commands of men as doctrines. End quote. Ugh. I gotta tell you, this whole subject is one of the strangest observations in my life as a Jehovah's Witness. Basing there and at one time my entire lives on an old book, but not really following the book, its standards or principles at all. But then claiming you do with stuff not found in the book or on its pages. It's all so weird until you get some time away and then you just realize it's a cult <laughs> it's men it's a publishing empire a real estate company that's all it is in conclusion in my effort to endlessly keep this simple as a guy who rambles on far too much I want to ask everybody listening a simple question that pertains to the original question about Jehovah's Witnesses following the Bible or men. Okay, so let's keep this super simple. Here it is. How many of their book carts do you walk by that features or is offering a free copy of the Bible? How many times are you offered your own copy of the Bible when they knock on your door? How many times has a Jehovah's Witness offered you a Bible? 
think about it. I want to thank everybody for letting me ramble on this week and hanging out with me. I truly appreciate all of you so, so much. If I don't follow up on any DMs or posts on YouTube or in social media, please know it's not personal. I'm just trying to play catch up. I want to thank you all. And I just want to leave with that question. Do Jehovah's Witnesses follow the Bible or men? Wherever you may be, be safe and be well. We will see you next week.